हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो स्टूडेंट्स वी आर डूइंग द चैप्टर नंबर टेंथ दैट इज ह्यूमन हेल्थ एंड डिजीजेस इन द प्रीवियस सेशन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर वी हैव जस्ट कंप्लीटेड द टाइप्स ऑफ अक्वायर्ड इम्यूनिटी सो वी स्टडीड दैट द अक्वायर्ड इम्यूनिटी इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स एक्टिव एंड पैसिव एंड देन द एक्टिव एंड द पैसिव अक्वायर्ड इम्यूनिटी इज फर्दर डिवाइडेड इन टू नेचुरल एंड आर्टिफिशियल सो वी स्टडीड बोथ ऑफ दैम and then we moved on to the cells of immune system where we studied the two types of cells that are involved in the working of the immune system the lymphocytes and the antigen presenting cells lymphocytes again are of two types that are t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes and both these lymphocytic cells they may look similar but their mechanism of response towards the antigen is very different so we studied about the mechanism of response of t lymphocytes to antigens where we saw that uh, t lymphocytes they produce clones as they come in contact with the antigen and these clones may be again looking similar but they are associated to perform different functions so we studied about the t uh, helper t cells or helper t lymphocytic cells then there are killer t cells or which are also known as cytotoxic cells which actually kill the antigen and then there are suppressor t cells that suppresses the own body cells so that the immune system does not get overactive and then there are memory t cells which actually keeps the memory of the first encounter with the antigen so whenever there is a second encounter the response will be quicker and it will be much stronger then about the b lymphocyte we studied that the mechanism of b lymphocyte is somewhat very similar to the mechanism of t lymphocyte where the b lymphocyte also produces clones and the clones are of plasma cells and memory cells okay further the memory cells produces specialized glycoproteins which are called as antibodies and these antibodies are circulated in the body fluid like blood and lymph the antibody molecules may bind to the cell membrane or they may remain free the free antibodies are of three they are they perform three main functions the first function was agglutination then it was opsonization and the neutralization so these are the three functions that is performed by the free uh, antibody uh, antibodies which are produced by the plasma cells now in this uh then we studied about the antigen presenting cell that is the second type of cell which is uh, involved in the working of the immune system this antigen presenting cells which are abbreviated as apc they are actually the cells which signal the other cells okay so they signal the other cells whenever they come in contact with any kind of pathogen so they actually deliver a stimulatory signals to the other cells to activate their stimulation so this is what we have studied in the previous session now in this session we'll move to the part of vaccination and then we'll be studying about the antibody structure and uh, the antibody antigen complex that is formed so starting with the vaccination process vaccination it is defined as an administration of vaccine to protect against a particular pathogen so the administration of vaccine it can be inactive pathogen or antigenic protection uh, of a particular pathogen now the body has immune system that we discussed previously so this body's immune system it actually helps to protect against pathogen that causes infection in our body now most of the time it is a very efficient system okay so either it is used to keep the microorganism out of track or it is used to keep them down and get rid of them uh, finally now however sometimes what happens is some of the pathogens they get overwhelmed to this immune system and they lead to serious problems in our body okay and these pathogens are most likely to cause problems as they are ones that the body are not able to recognize so vaccination is a way to teach the immune system as to how to recognize and eliminate the pathogenic organism so that way the body is always prepared if you are ever exposed to certain kind of uh, pathogens now 
that is how we can say that vaccination it becomes the primary prevention it is a preventive technique to protect our body from any kind of illness so vaccination has allowed us to control diseases like polio tetanus whooping cough and etc and uh, if we speak about the safety of these vaccination vaccinations or the vaccines they are considered to be safe as they are rigorously tested and they go through many rounds of studies and examination and research before they are actually used into the uh, general public or they have they are they are used into the pharmaceutical marketing now extend uh, extensive research and evidence shows us that the vaccines are safe as there are no much side effects and their side effects are actually very rare and even if there are certain side effect to certain people the side effects are very mild so this was about the vaccination part now let us move to the next part of this chapter where we'll be studying about the structure of the antibody antibodies as we have discussed previously which are produced by the b lymphocytes these are glycoproteins which are highly specific for specific antigens okay so antibodies again i am repeating it again that the antibodies are the one which are produced in our body they are certain chemicals protective chemicals which act against or which kills the antigens or the foreign molecules that are coming from the outside okay so the foreign molecules invade our body against which the antibodies work so antibodies are glycoproteins and they are highly specific for specific antigen these are also known as immunoglobulin and they are abbreviated as igs now they are produced in response to any antigenic stimulus so as discussed previously again that only when there is an antigenic stimulus or there is antigenic stimulation you can say that means only when the body comes in contact or the antibodies come in contact with any kind of antigen these antibodies get activated okay so they it has to have a prior contact with a pathogen or a microorganism so the antibodies are produced from plasma cells if you remember when we were studying about b lymphocytes we studied that the b lymphocyte cells they produce two types of clones there are plasma cells and then there are memory cells and then plasma cells further form the anti uh, bodies now the rate of production of antibodies uh, is something like 2000 molecules per second so the mature plasma cell will produce antibodies at an extremely rapid rate so there are about 2000 molecules of antibodies which are produced by the plasma cells per second okay so this rate is quite high now let us study about the structure of this antibody in detail so if we speak about the structure you can see the diagram over here this is the diagram of the antibody and students this is very important uh, the diagram is very important and every aspect of this diagram is very important as it is frequently asked in the hsc paper so the antibody as you can see the structure is y shaped molecule and each immuno immunoglobulin or you can say each of this antibody is made up of four polypeptide chains okay so there are two heavy chains which are known as h chain now in the diagram the yellow color chain that you can see this this is the heavy chain and again there are two light chains which are known as l chains so so on the outer side to this heavy chains there are blue color light chains which are present on either side and all of these four polypeptide chains they are held together by disulfide bonds so if you see all of these chains are held together okay so you can see the disulfide bonds between them your your and again over here so they are held together by a disulfide bond and that is how the h shape structure comes out now the reason uh, the region that holds the stem and the arm of the antibody now this is the stem and this is the arm so the region that actually holds these two structures is called hinge so this region over here is called the hinge each chain of an antibody includes two distinct regions there is a variable region and there is a constant region so if you see the namings or the labelings very clearly it is shown that 
this region the upper region becomes the variable region okay so this is the brown color part is the variable region for the heavy chain and this blue color structure is again the variable region for the light chain and then the lower region is the constant region so this region becomes the constant region okay so this is how the chain of the antibody includes two distinct regions the variable and the constant region talking about the variable region variable region constitutes the antigen binding site that means the antigens are bound or they bind to this variable region of the antibody and the antigen binding site which is present on the variable region of the antibody are known as paratopes so there are two paratopes in each antibody the this part of the antibody recognizes and binds to the specific antigen and forms an antibody antigen complex now as you can see each antibody carry two antigen uh, an antigen binding sites like two paratopes and that is how they are known as bivalent okay so this structure is very simple its explanation is very simple you just have to explain that it is a y shaped structure and it has four polypeptide chain two of heavy chains which are known as h chain and two of light chains which are known as l chain and all of these polypeptide chains the four polypeptide chains are held together by a disulfide bond and that disulfide bond which is holding all the polypeptide chain gives this a y shaped structure now the region that uh, holds the arm and the stem of this antibody is known as hinge and each of the antibodies are have are having two distinct region the variable and the constant region the variable region is the region which constitute of the antigen binding site and this region is known as paratope and each of this antibody are having two of these antigen binding site and so they are known as bivalent so students this was about the structure the detailed structure of the antibody now let us see how this antigen antibody complex is formed okay so first of all the study of this antigen antibody reaction that takes place this study is known as serology and each antibody is specific for a particular antigen this is uh, what we have studied in the previous part also so each antibody is specific for a particular antigen now the combining site of the antigen called the antigenic determinant which is also known as epitopes they react to the corresponding antigen binding site on the antibodies which are paratope so students if you remember over here we studied that the antigen binding site on the antibody is known as paratope similarly there is a corresponding determinant which is present on the antigen and this determinant is known as epitope so this epitope or the antigenic determinant they combine or they bind to the paratope and when they combine together they form this antigen antibody complex now a small variation is always present in the variable region of the antibody okay so if you see in this diagram over here this is the virus okay and these are the small ball like structures that you can see on the virus are the epitopes and you can see that the variable region of the antigen sorry the antibody they combine to this uh, epitope so the paratope is binding to the epitope okay and this is forming the antigen antibody complex now every antibody the variable region of the antibody is having a small variation and this small variation makes the antibody specific for a particular antigen so to show that small variation here if you see they have shown that each of the antibody the variable region of the antibody is made up of different structures okay so here if you see this is a y shaped structure here this is somewhat round and here it is somewhat rectangular shaped structure that you can see okay so that is how it shows that there are there is always a small variation in the antibody variable region and that small variation makes that particular antibody specific for a particular antigen now what happens is this specific 
variation in the variable region it recognizes a particular antigen then binds to it in a lock and key manner forming this antigen antibody complex okay so this is how the formation of the antigen antibody complex takes place now next let us study about the antigens on the blood cells okay so there are certain antigens present on the blood cells let us study about them there are several known antigens uh, which are present on the surface of the human rbc and these antigens gives rise to different kind of blood groups okay so there are many genetically determined blood groups that are present and these are known as abo blood groups rh then there is duffy and kid now duffy and kid the rare kind of blood groups they are uh, found on the surface of the rbc and they are named after the patient uh, in which this blood group was first discovered then there there is a uh, levis blood group so levis blood group is been given the name as there are two genes which are present on the chromosome number 19th okay so there are two genes which are present on the chromosome number 19th on basis of that this blood group this rare blood group is been given the name levis blood group then there is also p blood group and mns blood group now talking about mns blood group so mns antigen system in a human blood group system it is based on two genes which are glycophorin a and glycophorin b which are present on the chromosome number 4 okay so that is how this mns antigen system is been named then there is bombay blood group which is also a very rare and uh, this name has been given because it was first found in uh, bombay city and uh, it is found in the subcontinent indian subcontinents like pakistan and bangladesh as well and it is also found in middle east uh, like iran so these are some of the rare blood groups the common ones are the abo and the rh let us further study about the abo blood groups the a b and o blood group it was first discovered by carl landsterner in the year 1900 and he is also also awarded with a nobel prize for his discovery of the human blood group that is a b and o so he found out that two antigens or agglutinogens on the surface of human rbc and he named them as antigen a and antigen b and he also noticed that there are corresponding antibodies or agglutinins in the serum okay or you can say in the plasma and he named them as antibody a and antibody b again but antigen a and antibody antigen b are in capital so there is capital a and capital b and antibody a and antibody b are in small so there is antibody small a and antibody small b okay so he found out these two antigens and antibodies on the human rbc and the serum now talking about the fourth blood group that is blood group ab this was discovered by landsterner student the two students of his their name was de castello and sturley and it was discovered in 1902 and this is how the abo blood group has come in picture now there is some interesting feature about the abo blood group the blood group is a type of inheritance which is known as multiple allelism so the blood group it shows this inheritance and this is known as multiple allelism which we have uh, we have studied about multiple allelism in the previous lessons of genetics that we have studied so it is controlled by more than two alleles and the three alleles which are there are named as ia ib and io okay and out of these three alleles two of them are dominant and one is recessive so ia and ib are dominant and io is recessive now every individuals will have two alleles out of these three okay there are three alleles present but every individual will have a combination of two out of these three okay the combinations will be as follows as you can see this in the slide it can be ia and ia and in this case it is a homozygous condition and the blood group will be blood group a then there is ia and io 
again over here it is a heterozygous condition because one is recessive and other one is dominant and here the blood group will again be a as it is uh, the dominant uh, one shows the uh, character then there is ib and ib ib and ib is again homozygous condition where the blood group will be b and if it is ib and io the blood group will be b and it is again a heterozygous condition then there can be i a and i b over here both the alleles are dominant and the blood group therefore will be blood group a b so this is an example of codominance and it can also be i o and i o where it is a recessive uh, character and the blood group will be considered as o so as you can see there are six genotypes and there are four phenotypes okay so there are six genotypes 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and there are four phenotypes so this is one this is one this is one and this is one so four phenotypes and six genotypes which is seen in the abo blood group okay let us study further about this so in abo system the blood groups are determined by the presence or the absence of antigen a and antigen b and the blood group of the person is classified into four groups a b ab and o if the person is having blood group a okay in this case the rbc of that individual will have antigen a and the plasma will have anti b antibodies if the person is having a blood group b in that case the red blood cell on the surface of the red blood cells there will be antigen b and the plasma will have anti a antibodies okay if the blood group of the person is blood group ab then there will be both the antigens present on the red blood cells that is a and b and there will be no antibodies in the plasma so there will be neither a antibody neither b antibody so there will be only antigens which are present on the red blood cells and if the person is having a blood group o okay so in this case the red blood cells will have neither antigen a nor antigen b but both the antibodies will be present in the plasma okay so this is how according to this combination the blood group is determined as a b ab and o in every individual now talking about rh factor okay the rh factor the term rh is given because it was discovered first in the rhesus monkey okay and that is how the name is been given as rh factor now rh actually refers to a protein which is controlled by a gene and this gene produces an antigen that is named as antigen d okay so if a person it can be homozygous or heterozygous condition in the person if the person has this antigen d on the surface of the rbc the person is considered to be positive okay so the rh factor determines the positive and the negative uh, antigen in the person so if you want to understand this further we can take this example so example if a person having blood group o and there is antigen d present in the rbc so the blood group of this person will be considered as o positive and there are people with o negative blood groups so over here the blood group o negative it is considered when a person is having no antigen a b on the rbc as well as there is no rh factors present on the rbc in such case the person is considered to be with blood group o negative now o negative they are considered to be universal donors why are they considered to be universal donors as there are no foreign antigens there is no antigen a there is no antigen b as well there is no rh factors so as there are no foreign antigens it is very safe for this blood group or for this blood type to enter in the body so that is how o negative is considered to be universal donor and we if we speak about universal recipient ab positive is considered to be universal recipient as it has 
all of it it has antigen a it has antigen b as well as it has an rh factor so if it is positive of course it will have rh factor or the antigen d on the surface of rbc so as you see it has it comprises of all it comprises of antigen a antigen b and antigen d on the surface of rbc so it is considered to be universal recipient so this was about the rh factor now let us lastly study about the rh incompatibility now to understand this rh incompatibility we have to take an example so let us take a situation of a pregnant woman so here the mother suppose the mother is rh negative and the fetus that the mother is carrying in his in her body is rh positive okay so the mother is rh negative and the fetus is rh positive now what will happen in this condition the rbc of the mother will have no rh factor and there there will be no rh antibodies whereas the rbc of the fetus will have the rh factors and there will be no rh antibodies okay once again we are taking in we are taking a situation of a preg pregnant woman who is carrying a fetus now this mother is having rh negative factor and the fetus is having rh positive factor so what happens when there is rh negative there will be no rh factor and there will be therefore there will be no rh antibodies in the fetus what will happen the rbc will have the rh factor and because there is rh factor present there will be rh antibodies which will be present now all the 9 months of gestation period there is no mixing of blood okay but at the time of parturition that is at the time when the mother is delivering the child the umbilical cord is cut and when the umbilical cord is cut there is a little mixing of blood that takes place in the mother and the the maternal blood and the fetal blood so there is little blood mixing that takes place now if the mother's blood is going into the fetus blood there is no harm because there is no antigen and no antibody so there is absolutely no harm but if the fetus blood is coming into the mother's blood it is bringing the rbc with rh against which the mother's body starts preparing rh antibodies okay what is happening for now what is happening during the parturition period the umbilical cord is cut and therefore there is mixing of blood that is taking place because of this mixing of blood if the mother's blood enters the fetus blood there is absolutely no harm because there is no antigen and no antibodies going into the fetus blood but if the case is otherwise if the fetus blood is entering into the mother's blood the rbc of the fetus blood will have the rh okay it will have the rh factor now against this rh factors the mother's body it starts preparing antibodies the rh antibodies and now the mother's body is having the rh antibodies and this anti rh antibodies will now go into the fetal body and if it goes into the fetal body it will create certain effects it will show certain effects but this effect is for a very short duration as you know that the parturition period or the mixing of the blood uh, this period is very short so there will be certain effects but the effects will be a very limited effects let us see what is the effect that is seen there are two main effects some rbc the first effect is that some rbc it gets destroyed because uh, of which the fetus has anemia which is known as erythro uh, er erythroblastosis uh, fetalis so this is one condition and in the other condition the fetus will suffer from jaundice so these are the two effects that are seen if there is mixing of blood now in order to prevent this rh negative mother is injected with anti rh antibodies throughout the process of pregnancy okay now if the same mother conceives for the second time with the same combination okay if the same mother is conceiving for the second time with the same combination of mother being rh negative and the child being rh positive there will be no effects why 
because now the mother is already having the rh antibodies present in her body so there will be no effects seen so this is what is rh incompatibility so students in this session we have studied about the blood groups about the rh factor and we have studied about the antibodies and the antigen antibody complex now we end this session over here and in the next session we will be studying about uh, common diseases that are seen in humans.